What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you. And today I want to talk about this little puppy right here, the Elgato Cam Link 4K and all of the troubles that I had with it. Now, some of the issues on this I thought was going to be because of the current B550 X570 motherboard um, issues. But there was actually something else, a setting that I needed to change. So I was getting constant disconnects, crashes and lockups in OBS. It didn't really matter what settings I was recording at, whether I was coming in at 1080p at 60 frames or 30 frames per second, or if I was coming in at 4K, it was just constantly cutting out on me, which was very annoying because I want to go strictly to mostly recording through OBS. And this is what I needed to make the most out of the Sony a6400 that I have in front of me here as my face cam, although we have that plugged into an Avia Media Live Gamer HD today, so I could you know, show you the cam link, but I was a little bit devastated because obviously this thing is like 100, 120 pounds. This little thing is, you know, six, seven pounds. Now, these are incredible value, don't get me wrong, but they're not that great. I mean, they're only really more of a short term fix. When this thing works properly, it's much better because we have all the uncompressed um, data rates that we can have, which is especially good on Sony A series cameras that are max out at 100 megabits per second. We can push that further. If we're recording through OBS, um, you also get YUY2 at 1080p 60, um, just basically general better colors. This thing, if you mess around with it, the filters a little bit, you can make it looking quite nice, but it's MJPEG. So yeah, I'm not, not trying to put these down. I would still recommend having one of these in your drawers as spare. I'm actually using one for another camera, which you will see in a second. But yeah, I was still constantly having disconnects after just doing so much troubleshooting and so much running around with this. And there is a um, time code in the description if you just want to get to the fix that I did to get this working. But I do think it's very important to um, watch some of the other things that you need to do as well to make sure you get the most out of this because this is a high bandwidth device. And if you are a content creator, maybe if you're someone like me, there's chances that you're going to have multiple cameras. You're going to be using a couple of these. You might have DAX, USB audio interfaces to record stuff. You have got a lot more devices plugged into your computer than someone else. So the first thing is for the B550 X570 fix. Um, there's already BIOS updates coming out for this. A few boards have already been patched. Um, there's an Agazer update all rolling out throughout April. But if you have just bought one of these and you're struggling, the first thing I'd recommend to do and something that I still have to do to get this to be working properly um, and to just solve a lot of uh, many other issues is to drop PCIe Gen 4 down to Gen 3 in your motherboard. Just go in on your PCI settings and set that. I know it's a bit of a pain if you've got a Gen 4 SSD and you're feeling like you're bottlenecking it a bit, but it's only going to be for another few weeks. Hopefully those BIOS updates fix it. Now, the next thing that's very important, and this is what I'm going to show you right now. Hopefully, we've got this on screen. So this is one of these, if you're wondering about the quality. And you can see it's just sort of a bit, it's a bit, I don't know, saturated. I haven't had a filter to it or anything like that, um, being with the MJPEG. But the most important thing is load balancing your USBs, okay? So on all motherboards, USBs are generally going to be on different controllers unless it's like a really basic motherboard that has like four USBs or something. They'll generally all be on different controllers. So we could maybe sort of assume that these USB 3s here, maybe they're on their own controller. The Gen 3.1s could be on a different one. You can find out all this information by looking online, especially with um, people that maybe have been using the boards for things like Un Unraid and stuff like that, where you need all different controllers for your different VMs. But essentially what you want to do is make sure that the cam link's just sort of plugged into its own one and test around and play with it. Another thing a lot of people say is that the cable is trash as well. I haven't fully decided whether you shouldn't be using the cable or not. Um, obviously, at sometimes you might need it because you can't get other devices in. Now, if you are worried about this, um, like making sure it's the right controller, a real simple and easy one. And what I've been doing with my cam link is I just plug it into the... USB free front panel connector. Um, and that's going to massively sort out loads of things. So just have it plugged in to its own one. Like I said, I just plugged this into the top of my computer. But even after all of that, even after all of that stuff, I was still having killer amounts of disconnects. So this is what actually fixed it for me. So let me just plug the cam link in. So what you want to install is the Elgato 4K capture utility. Obviously, it's going to say no signal here because I haven't got a camera plugged into it but if you come up to the settings cog here now under device you can't see anything it just tells you the firmware version firmware isn't actually freely available you have to contact elgato and they will send you one for it 
but there is this this is the trick that i did and since then this is my cam link has run absolutely flawlessly um obviously the other steps are very important too um that i said at the beginning of the video so you hold control key down just hold the control key down then open preferences and now you see you get usb transfer mode and changing that to iso cronus or whatever it is literally just fixed it it doesn't matter what i'm doing 1080p 4k any of the settings anything that i mess around with the cam link has worked absolutely flawlessly since then so um yeah there you go that is just the fix that i've done um, i'm really happy that i've been able to get that fixed because like i said i was thinking why have i spent so much more money over this another huge problem for me as well and the reason why i need the cam links is currently on my motherboard um, i don't really like the pcie layout on it for using um sort of gen 1 capture cards i don't really have room to put another one in there no i would think i'd have to run a cable down because my graphics card blocks it then if i went for a 4k capture card like the ava media 4k or the um elgato 4k 60 pro my graphics cards are triple slot so it's literally going to choke my card which i don't want i suppose another option is i could put my card in the bottom of the case but then still it's going to be choked as well so it's a bit weird buying all that stuff i've never really considered motherboard layouts and where all the pcies are because i've only just ever just had a graphics card i don't use wi-fi cards or anything like that but now actually wanting to build sort of streaming rigs and maybe even build a separate streaming pc it's actually very important to me where those where those things are laid out because i might actually end up having to have three or four capture cards um in the system but yeah anyway that's the fix um that's what got it all sorted for me so i'll just show you that one last time more as a test to do this oh we're down like that one so yeah just hold control down on the settings set it to isochronous or whatever that's called um, and you should be fully sorted anyway i'll leave you to it that's it from me today um, and i'll be back with some videos very soon